Hello, my name is Joy with Two-Way Radio Center. Today I'm going to show you how to program a Vertex Standard VX350 radio using the programming software. By now you've already seen our video on how to load the VX350 programming software on your computer, as well as the video on how to install the FIF12 programming software on your computer. At this point, if you do not have the VX350 programming software installed on your computer or the FIF12 programming software, Make sure you go back and do that before you go any further. To program a VX350 radio, you're going to need two different programming cables. You'll need the FIF12 and the CT106 pigtail. So, make sure your FIF12 and CT106 pigtail are connected to your computer. And you grab your VX350 radio, have it turned off, and then we'll get started. To open the VX350 programming software, on my computer, I go to Start, I go to All Programs, and then mine is in the Vertex Standard file. Double click VX350 series. The VX350 series programming software programs the VX351 and the VX354. So I'm going to double click to open, and then I'm going to maximize my screen. Started. Let's make sure that our COM ports are configured correctly. So click on File then configure and then mine is on COM3 and it will say FIF12 in parentheses if that is truly the correct COM port. Yours may say COM4 or it may say COM8. If you do not see that COM port just click on the drop down box and look for the COM port that has the FIF12 in parentheses. If you do not see this you should refer to our previous video on installing the FIF12 software. I'm going to change the baud rate on the computer 38,400 to speed it up. If you leave it at 9,600, what can happen is the transfer rate of the speed is too slow and the programming will time out and you might not be able to program your radio correctly. So I changed it to 38,400, selected OK. And now, before you start programming your radio, you should always read your radio. In this software, read also means upload. So you can either upload here you can click radio upload. Your radio has to be turned off. Here it will prompt you to turn the radio on to start uploading. I'm programming a VX354 radio which has a display so on the display of my VX354 radio it started to say PC program. It says upload complete. Click OK. Okay. And you see here, because this is a VX354 radio, it gives the column for tag, and that is the channel name. On your display, it will say channel 1, or if you want to customize this, you have the option. Like I'm going to change this to TWRC for 2A Radio Center, and click Enter. Okay. Right now, only channel 1 is an active channel. You can see because channel 1 is black, and then the other channels down to 16 are all grayed out. To activate these channels, just click on the channel and then hit the space bar. If you want to deactivate the channel, if you just want to leave this radio as a one channel radio, hit the space bar to deactivate a radio. So space to activate, space to deactivate. I'm going to activate four channels on this radio. This is a VX354 UHF radio that I'm programming. The frequency range is from 450 to 512 megahertz. So what I'm going to program in right now is 454.5. And all I did was type in the receive frequency of 454.5. You can hit the enter or tab key. You see the information transferred from my receive column to the transmit column. Unless you're using a repeater, you are always going to want your receive frequency and your transmit frequency to be identical. A repeater is like a signal booster for your radios if you're not quite getting the range that you need, in which case these two frequencies would be different. If you're using a repeater, you know that you're using a repeater. So if you do not have a repeater, just like I said, make sure that these two frequencies are identical. Channel 2 I'm going to do at 464.9.
And then also to navigate in the software, you can use the arrow keys up and down to go to your different columns. Okay, for frequency 3, for channel 3, I'm going to try that at 560. And you see it just kicked it back to 512 because that is the max frequency that I can use. If I try to program a VHF frequency in the radio, like 151, it kicks it down to 450 because that's the lowest frequency you can use. If you have a frequency that does not fall within that range, then make sure that before you begin programming the radio, you did read your radio and you didn't just use the default screen. Um, it's also possible that the radio you have is not the right split for the frequency that you need to use. So just double check that information. Of course, if you have any questions about that, you can contact to a radio center. I'm going to change channel 3 to 467 and then channel 4 to 450. Okay. The next step that I'm going to do is change the privacy code on the radio. A privacy code, it goes by many names. You may hear privacy tone, private line tone, PL code, CTCSS, DCS, DPL code, CSQ. These are just all different names for different types of privacy codes. Okay, and the same goes with the decode and encode. Um, I'm going to want my privacy codes to be the same. Okay, to change the privacy code, the this right here means zero. I'm going to just hit the space bar, and the C is the CTCSS code. If I have a DCS code or DPL code I want to use, just hit the space bar again. And if I want to go back to zero, just hit the space bar again. Okay. You'll want to use a private line code or a sub-audio code for your frequency on each channel just to make sure you don't get interference from other people who may be in the area on that same frequency. It's just an extra line of security so you don't hear, you don't hear transmissions that you don't need to hear. Okay, so I'm going to program a privacy code by hitting the space bar. I want to program this to, well I want to have a CTCSS code but not 67.0 so I'm just going to double click and here the CTCSS frequency table populates. Let's see, I want to put 131.8 so just double click and again the same code populates in the decode and encode column. Okay, for channel 2, say I want to program this to a DCS code or a DPL code. So I hit the space bar one time, hit the space bar one more time, and then double click on the table. And then here you can select whichever privacy code you would like. Okay. Another way, if you don't see the privacy code that you'd like in your radio, or if you don't want to pull up the table, you can just type in C, say 67. So whatever number you'd like, and take it. The same for a DPL code, just type in D. We'll say 131, enter. Okay. Other columns that you should be aware of is the W slash N column, and that has to do with the narrow banding or wide banding of your radio. Due to the, due to the FCC mandate, as of January 1st, 2013, all radios need to be programmed to 12.5 kilohertz or less. That means narrow banding. So all of these channels are set to N to narrow band by default. Um, to change that, you can hit the space bar, but even if you change this to W5, which is 25 kilohertz, which is wideband, um, when you go to program the radio, it will default that back to narrow band, and that is due to the FCC mandate. It's not a two-way radio center policy. It is the law. <laughs> So another feature that is very commonly used in the radios is a scan feature. And this is the scan column. To make sure that uh, okay. each channel that you want to have on your scan list just needs to have that little check mark next to it. So if you want to have, be able to scan channel 1, 2, and 3, but you don't want channel 4, you can just hit the space bar to uncheck it. If you do want to be able to scan all of your channels, just make sure there's a checkbox in all of those columns. If you're not quite getting the range that you would like out of your radios, you can look at the power column. The default power is high. Um, if you see that it is set to L, which you can change by hitting the low, that lowers the wattage and transmit power of your radio. 
So just take a look at that. And most people, most users, they do leave that at high. Okay. The VX350 radio, the 351 has two side buttons that are programmable. The VX354 has the same two side programmable buttons, but it also has four keys in the front, an A, B, C, and D button. To program those, click on Common, Key Function. Okay, you see here that there is side one, side two, A, B, C, and D. If you're using a VX351 non-display radio, these options won't appear or they will be grayed out. You have the option to do a press or a press and hold. A press is short press. Press and hold means you can hold it down for a couple seconds. Um, that just means that you can program more features in your radio, even if you don't have as many buttons. So side button one can be programmed to two different, two different features. The default for side press to do a short press is monitor. For the press and hold, it turns the squelch off, which is your privacy code off. If you have any questions about the terminology, all you have to do is have something selected, and this is in any part of the Vertex standard programming software, and then punch in F1. And F1, that is your help screen, the help menu. So if you wonder what monitor is, click on monitor, and then you see the definition. And here is a list of the different features that you can program your radius to. A lot of these are very advanced features that you may not need to program into your radio. The most common function that you might want to have in your radio would be scan. So I'd like to program, here we go, short press A to scan. Okay, so I just select it from the drop down list. And then click OK. Okay, so before I go anywhere else, I'm just going to double check this profile, everything that I've programmed into it for accuracy. Yes, this is what I want. And then I'm going to save my file by going File, Save As. Let's see. And by default, it saves it on your C drive under your Vertex standard VX350, also known as CE86 programming. But I'm going to want to put this on the desktop. And I'm just going to name this Demo VX354 and then click Save. So you'll be able to use this profile that you've just created for future use. Now to program the Vertex Standard 2A radio, my VX350, you can either select this button which is Download, or you can click Radio Download. Do you want to start downloading? Yes. Yes I do. Okay. The download is complete and click OK. Now if you have other radios to program, you can just grab those. You do not need to read the radio every time you go to program a new radio. All you have to do is click download. Um, a common issue is if, the, if you try to download the radio and it bonks out, um, make sure that you're following the instructions by starting with your radio turned off and then when it prompts you to turn the radio on, then turn it on. Also make sure your COM ports are configured if you have any, any issues at the initial setup. Okay. I'm going to close out of here. To open up the profile for future use, all you have to do is find your profile, double click on it, and voila, it appears. Thank you for your time today, and if you have any questions, please contact us at 2A Radio Center. Thank you very much.